بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أي رحمة في الله will now begin the study of Imam Anawi's Arba'ina Hadith known as the 40 Hadith Anawi and we already spoke very very briefly about Imam Anawi and just for accuracy he died 676 Hijri 676 Hijri which is about 700 and something years ago, 740 years ago, something like this, 700 and, because uh, now we're at 1435 Hijri. So, the first hadith is a hadith which is very well known and we'll talk very briefly and give you some of the benefits of this hadith. Because that's the point of our gosh, is to gain the meaning of the hadith and some of the benefits of the hadith. عن أمير المؤمنين أبي حفص عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله تعالى عنه قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إنما أعمال بالنيات وإنما لكل مرء منوى فمن كان الحجة إلى الله ورسوله فحجة إلى الله ورسوله ومن كان الحجة للدنيا يسيبها أو امرأة ينكحها فحجة إلى ما هجر إليه رواه شيخان متفق عليه إن ذي الحديث the hadith of Amir Mu'mineen, Abi Hafs, Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So this was the kunya of Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Uh, he was known as Abu Hafs. And also, of course, they began the Amir Mu'mineen, meaning he was the leader of the faithful, the leader of the believers, because he was the second khalifa after Abu Bakr. So when the Prophet وسلم, died, you had Abu Bakr, then you had then you had Umar and then you had Uthman and Ali So this was the tartib or this was the order of the Khalifa. So uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab was the second Khalifa and he was known at the, as Amir al-Mu'mineen in that time. He was the leader of the faithful. And he said, I heard the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, Verily actions are tied to the intentions, and everyone shall get that which he intended. Therefore, he who makes hijrah to Allah and his Messenger, then he has made hijrah to Allah and his Messenger. And he who makes hijrah for some worldly gain, or to take some woman in marriage, then he will get that for which he intended. And it was related in Bukhari and Muslim. This hadith has immense, immense benefits. And we're just going to be as brief, so that way we can gain uh, the most benefit from this and keep it as short as possible. One of the things that's uh, very important is the issue of hijrah. So in this hadith, he talked, the Prophet Sallallahu talked about hijrah. And in general, this is the general meaning of the hadith is that whatever action you do in Islam, your reward will be according to your intention. If you seek knowledge, you study Islam and read the books and, and, and study, and you do it to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, then you'll get reward for it. Because in the ma'mal of actions are tied to the intentions. Your actions, the things you do, are related to your intentions. Likewise, if you do it for other people, if you seek the knowledge because you want the people to say that you're an alim, to say you're knowledgeable, to say you're a good person, to say you're a talib al ilm then your reward will be with the people. Maybe they'll give you money. Maybe they'll give you status. Maybe they will praise you. But then maybe that will take you to the hellfire because talib al ilm is an act of ibadah. And there's a hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu said, I think it's the hadith of, uh, the hadith of either Abu Huraira, uh, Abu Huraira or Ibn Abbas, anhuma, in which he said, In the awwal al-nas yukhda alayhi yawm al-qiyamah rajalun ushushila. He said, the, from the first people on the day of judgment who will be judged 
by Allah will be a man who was martyred. And then the hadith is a very long hadith. So the man comes before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will be brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment and he will be asked, what did you do? And he will say, I fought for your sake. And then Allah will say to him, you lied, but you did it so the people would say you were brave. And the people said you were brave. And then he will be dragged on his face in the hellfire. And this was a man who did jihad. He thought he did it jihad fi sibilillah. But he did it to please the people because the niya, the intention wasn't right. The second person was a, a, the alim, the person who has knowledge. So the second person was the person who, who was brought before Allah on the Day of Judgment and he was a person who studied the Qur'an, maybe he memorized the Qur'an, a shaykh of the Qur'an. And he was a person of knowledge, he had knowledge, he was an alim. And the people said, hey, that's an alim, they praised him. But Allah, so Allah asked him, what did you do? He said, I, I read the Qur'an for your sake, and I taught the people, I, I studied ilm, you know, I was of ilm, and I taught the knowledge for your sake. And Allah will say, you lied. But you did it so the people would say that you were an alam. And the people said it about you. And then he will be dragged on his face in the fire. And then the third man was a man who did, who had a lot of wealth. And he spent it in different ways, in righteous ways. But he did it for the wrong reason. And he also was thrown in the hellfire. The point being is that it relates to your niya, your intention. So if you give sadaqah to please Allah you'll get reward. If you give sadaqah to please the people, then you won't get reward for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that. If it was just to please the people. But if you did it as an act of ibadah, you'll be rewarded for that. If you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you make your prayer good for Allah, then you'll be rewarded for that. You'll get full reward bi Allah. But if you prayed and you mix it with riyadh, the light shirk, that you did it to show off, then may, then you will not, uh, some of your reward will be taken. And it just depends on the when you made the riyah and did you correct it or not. And this will make a difference whether your prayer is totally batal, your to prayer is not accepted, or whether it's accepted. So it depends on your intention. Or it can even turn into the major shirk because it could be worshiping other than for other people. You prayed only for the people. And that which you want to be aware of. The second issue in this hadith is about hijrah. That hijrah, in the sharia, it means to leave the land of disbelief to the land of belief. Or to leave the land of bid'ah to the land of sunnah. Or to leave, leave off the haram and come to the halal. This is also a form of hijrah, as the Prophet ﷺ said in authentic hadith. So there are different types of hijrah. As the Prophet Wasallam said uh, in a Sahih Hadith, he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which means, and I can't find the Hadith here, but that the hijrah is uh, leaving, uh, leaving the sins. والمهاجر من هجر ما نهى نهى الله عنه that the muhajir or the one who makes hijra is the person who makes hijra or he leaves what Allah has prohibited. Okay, so that hadith in general referred to it refers to the niya. Here's some of the benefits that we gain from this hadith. So I'll write some of these benefits here on the board, and you'll be able to see one of the things that. Uh, the ulama mentioned from this hadith is that it's permissible to have a kunya, to take a name like me, I'm Abu Abdurrahman, 
because my oldest son, he's Abdurrahman. So I'm Abu Abdurrahman. Uh, so to take a kunya, if as long as it's a righteous kunya. So you can't take a kunya, make a name for yourself uh, that's an, in a bad way. But you should make a name. I'm, if you're a woman, um so-and-so. Uh, um Rashad. Um Khalid, whatever, like this. But you should be a, a good name, so you can be known by your kunya. Another important thing is the importance of saying radiallahu ta'ala for the sahaba. So sending prayers to have mercy on the Sahaba or that Allah is pleased with the Sahaba. So that means you pray to Allah to sending prayers to this is a, a Radi. Radiallahu uh, to the Sahaba, on the Sahaba. That, that you were making dua for the Sahaba, basically. Okay? That's not as important, but the more important things we'll, we'll, we'll get to. Uh, another thing of this is that your niyyah or your intention is pillar for all deeds. For all deeds. So that means that uh, your intention, your niya, it's a pillar because it's one of the ways that you have your deeds accepted. The two ways you have your deeds accepted, and they one comes from this hadith, this is the hadith about the intention, the niya, is that any act of ibadah that you do, any worship you do to Allah, you have to have ikhlas, you have to be sincere. So intention is a, is a pillar for deeds. Meaning sincerity, sincere, sincere intention, okay? It's a pillar for all your deeds. That's one. The second pillar is that it's mutara, that you follow the sunnah of the Prophet That's the second intention, for a second, um, uh, second pillar of having your deeds accepted. So, for example, if you pray, you have to pray to Allah. Okay, you're praying to Allah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He's ordered you to do so. And you're following the Prophet when you pray. You pray like the Prophet. So that means you have those two pillars. The two pillars. So the first pillar is intention. You can say like this. It's in tension. And the second pillar is Sunnah is that it follows the Sunnah of the Prophet. These are your deeds. If you want your deeds accepted, then it needs these two pillars. It needs to have ikhlas lillah, sincerity to Allah, and follow the Sunnah of the Prophet. Another benefit of this hadith is that the intention. Your niya, we'll just call it the niya. The niya is on the tongue. That your niya, you don't have to, uh, I'm sorry. Your niya is not on your tongue, your niya is in your heart. Okay? So let me correct that. Your niya is in your heart because you don't have to, when you're going to pray, for example, salat, you don't have to say, uh, I'm going to pray four units of prayer of Salat al-Asr, Allahu Akbar, la. But you have that in your heart. So when you say that on your tongue, that's a bid'ah. The scholars of Islam, the ulama, like Imam Nawawi and many ulama, they say that if you say it on your tongue, then that's a bid'ah. Because you don't need to say that. You don't need to say, I'm praying Maghrib prayer, it's three units of prayer. Some people say that when they pray. Some, If you go in, especially in many Muslim countries, you'll find especially, uh, some people who don't 
uh, have as much knowledge about Islam, but they've been worshiping Allah their whole life, but they do this. They'll, you'll hear them whispering, I'm going to pray the four units of uh, Asr prayer, and I'm praying it behind the Imam, and da 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 Allahu Akbar. Okay? That's not right. Instead, the niya is in the heart. So that's another thing we learn from this hadith. Another benefit from this hadith is it encourages you that you should be sincere. It teaches us to be sincere. Have ikhlas. Hathala ikhlas. This hadith teaches you that you have to be sincere in your worship. Uh, and the opposite of that is true, that if you don't, without ikhlas, without sincerity, uh, that's a sign deed is not accepted. Your deed not accepted. That's a sign that your deeds are not, your deed is not accepted. That if you don't have sincerity for to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that's a sign that your deed is not accepted. This hadith, because it, it is a little difficult to write it all, uh, also teaches us, so I because that takes time. It also we learn from this hadith that it's important to uh, be cautious of the dunya, of wanting too much of the dunya. Get what you need. It's okay to have a nice comfortable bed and have some extra things. That's great. But you don't have to have the nicest car. You don't have to spend all of your money on this and having gold and this and that and the other. It doesn't mean it's haram to have gold or anything. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you don't need to be extra lavish. So this hadith shows us to be simple. That's one of the traits of the Prophet ﷺ and of the Sahaba is that they were simple and humble because they focus more on the akhirah 